Programmable LED Poi. We've all seen them, many of us have lusted after them, and now I'm gonna drill them down. Drex here from DrexFactor.com, and I am coming to you with a review that I have wanted to do for the better part of two years now. I am going to compare four different models of programmable LED POI from what I would consider to be some of the best known manufacturers of them out there. Before we dive in, of course, I just want to put a huge shout out out there to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Flow Toys, Pyroterra Light Toys, LMF Props, Spinballs, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can check out more information about all these awesome companies and the things that they're doing to support flow orders like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. So, here's what I got today. Uh, I have programmable LED Poi models from Ignis, from Pyroterra Light Toys, from Neo Poi, as well as from A1 Technologies, which um, all have quite a lot in common in that they're all either Eastern European or Russian based, um, which is kind of an interesting coincidence. Uh, and they all produce models of these programmable POI that kind of took the flow arts world by storm just a few years ago. So let's also talk real briefly about what criteria I'm using to describe what I'm calling programmable POI. Number one, they feature a strip of LEDs. The form factor for these almost always looks like a long tube. Number two, those strips of LEDs can be made to produce different images by flickering on and off several times a second and using the persistence of vision effect to be able to generate pictures that we see in the trails. Number three, those images are programmable. This is a big thing that separates this class of POI from other POI that are kind of similar. Namely, that there is a way that you can put custom images on them to display as you so choose. We're gonna drill down these four sets of POI using six different categories. Number one, how easy are they to use? Number two, what does their feature set look like? Number three, how durable are they? Number four, what's the resolution on these? Number five, what's the battery life look like? And of course, number six, how much do they cost? For each of the first three categories, I'm also going to issue a rating on a three-point scale. A one on that scale indicates that it does not meet expectations. Number two indicates that it meets expectations. And number three means that it exceeds expectations. So let's go ahead and dive in, yeah? So starting off with ease of use. So we're gonna start off with the uh, Graphic Poi Razer 160s from A1 Technologies. Um, I will also put a proviso in these that these are the largest set of Poi that I'm going to include in this review. They have a two button interface and um, once you kind of like understand some of the pieces of how that works, it's a lot more intuitive, but it probably took me a good 10 minutes of playing around with it before I could figure out how to activate a program on these. Um, I will say that the grouping function on these, that is their ability to sync with each other wirelessly and everything, is not terribly intuitive. It uses a kind of master-slave relationship that um, to be perfectly frank with you, if I hadn't read the manual, I would have never figured it out on my own. In addition, the computer program to be able to install new programs on these and everything. Um, it's not the most friendly of user interfaces. It's not awful. So I'm going to give the graphic poi from A1 Technologies a two on a three point scale. Next up, the Pixel 80 HD from Ignis. Um, so Ignis was actually the first uh, company that I ever uh, used a set of programmable poi from. And they have a three button interface which have lovely little glyphs on them that actually make figuring out how to use them uh, quite intuitive. Uh, you can pretty much figure out everything that you need to know in terms of turning these on and selecting programs and everything just by looking at the little graphics that they have on the buttons which is really nice. So the computer program for these does use a timeline interface but um, it can be difficult to get it to preview in a way that makes sense. A little bit confusing but not the end of the world. Um, I will also give these a two on a three point scale. And next up we have the Visual Poi version four minis from Pyroterra Light Toys. Um, so I'm just gonna be straight up. These are my gold standard in terms of uh, having an unbelievably easy to use user interface. Um, it, it's easy to change programs, it's easy to start them, it's easy to stop them. Uh, and in addition, the program to program these on a computer is uh, very, very intuitive to use. You can very, very easily match up your program to a piece of music or what have you. Um, and it's basically what you see is what you get, like uh, both in terms of using the actual POI as well as the program uh, on a computer. These are about as simple as you can possibly get. So Visual POI, 
give version four, I'm going to give a three on that three point scale. And finally, we have the 32 pixel uh, programmable POI from NeoPoi. I found both using and programming these to be an incredibly difficult experience. Um, in addition, the program on a computer to be able to download programs to these and everything. Um, yeah, again, not that easy to use. And, um, you know, as I said in the review, the person that they had uh, writing that program for them seems to have absconded, so unfortunately they haven't been able to update it and everything. But these I'm going to have to give uh, a one out of three in terms of ease of use, simply because uh, I have never struggled with a set of POI like I've struggled with these. All right, so now let's talk about features. And honestly, this is going to turn out to be pretty standardized because there are certain feature sets that are starting to become more common amongst these programmable POI, and I also have things that I think are important. So when it comes right down to it, all these POI basically start off with a full three points, but they can get points deducted for any of the following. Number one, if they do not have a Mac compatible program for uploading programs to the POI. It is 2019 and I'm living in the United States and if you're selling to people in the United States, you have to be able to support multi-platform. Uh, number two, if they have uh, tethers that are teeny little nylon ropes instead of better quality tethers like flow cord or uh, some equivalent therein. For paying hundreds of dollars for a set of POI, they should have decent tethers. Uh, and finally, uh, a feature that's become really popular recently is the ability to wirelessly communicate between the two POI, whether it be a master slave or whether they're just synchronized somehow. So uh, a set of POI that lacks any one of these three features will lose a point because of that. So starting with the graphic POI 160 from uh, A1 Technologies. Um, so they have the awesome tethers. Thank you so much A1 Technologies. Uh, they also have the wireless sync function where you can do a master-slave dynamic between uh, multiple sets of POI. Um, they do not, however, have a Mac compatible program. So uh, this is one of the reasons why I've had to acquire a PC in the past year. Um, one other quick note I'll put in features though is that they come with this very delightful hard shell case that I absolutely love. So I'm gonna give them some brownie points on that one. Uh, overall though, I'm gonna say that these get a two out of three. Next up, the Pixel 80 HD from Ignis. Now uh, they have a Mac compatible program, which is awesome, but they have the little nylon cords to them, uh, which I don't like. I'm told that there is an option where you can get uh, better tethers on them, uh, but honestly, I feel like it should kind of be the default at this point. Uh, in addition, there is no wireless sync feature on these currently, so they are going to get a one out of three. The Visual Poi Minis from Pyroterra Light Toys get the hat trick. Not only do they have awesome tethers, they also have a Mac compatible program and the wireless syncing, uh, both between the Poi as well as via a remote. So congratulations, Pyroterra Light Toys. Y'all are right on top of the game in terms of features. And finally, the 32 pixel option from NeoPoi. Uh, they have the nylon tethers. Um, there's an option available where you can get uh, better tethers, but I think, again, that that should be the default for all of these sets of programmable POI and everything. Um, in addition, there is no Mac compatible program for these. Um, they do, however, have a wireless syncing feature, uh, which was actually really helpful to me in both doing my review for these as well as putting together this review. Uh, as another thing that'll give you some brownie points with these, um, they have this interesting stabilization feature where the POI automatically detect how fast you're spinning them and it will make sure to either stretch or shrink the images that are programmed into them according to the speed at which you're spinning, which I think is actually pretty awesome. And it's a feature that uh, I was not initially aware of until I was looking back through the literature on these and suddenly realized that uh, the pictures on these never got distorted no matter how fast I was spinning them. So as cool a feature as that is, I'm still gonna give them a one because of the tethers and lack of Mac compatible program. 
All right, so now let's talk durability. And I'm gonna admit straight up that this category is straight up just a little bit arbitrary. Um, I've only had two of these sets of poi long enough to be able to use them extensively and see how much they hold up to abuse and everything. So really what it comes down to is, uh, does it seem like this is a pretty durable set of poi and if not, why? And just straight up, this section also comes with a proviso that in all cases, when you are using programmable POI, you should try to avoid collisions with anything because the form factor is such that at some point, something on the board is going to get shook around. And when that happens, you're going to start seeing pixels go dead. So uh, be careful no matter what set of programmable POI you're using. Okay, so the graphic Razer 160s, I will just straight up admit I haven't used a whole lot uh, partially because they are only programmable on PC. The few times I have used them though, um, they seem to hold up fairly well. Um, we'll it, it, this is one of those kind of wait and see things, but uh, so far so good. I'm going to give them a 2 out of 3 because with what little use I've been giving to them, uh, I haven't been able to break anything. So the Pixel 80 HDs from Ignis. Um, this is the only pair that I have that I have managed to damage so far. Um, there's a little crack along the uh, kind of shell of one of them. And to be honest with you, it happened so early on, I'm not even sure whether they got damaged like that in the mail or whether I managed to damage them. Um, the other one seems to be perfectly fine. There's definitely some dings on it and everything. And um, these are probably the set that I have that uh, have gotten the second most use. So I'm actually gonna give these a two out of three because I can't remember how the crack happened, but yeah, these are the only set of programmable POI that I have right now that have been damaged at all. And now the visual POI minis from Pyroterra Light Toys. Um, these get a three out of three because they are the pair that I have used most extensively. In the two years that I've had these, uh, on average, I use these probably once or twice a month and uh, not only have I never been able to damage them significantly, um, every single bit about them from the tethers to the shells and everything seems to be holding up beautifully. And finally, the Neopoi 32s. Um, so much like the A1 Poi, I just haven't used these enough to really know how they hold up in the long term. Um, I will say that they're constructed very, very differently from every other set of Poi on here in that uh, the components are 3D printed and the casing around them appears to be uh, a different kind of polycarbonate than the other sets of Poi. I don't know what that means for their long-term performance, but uh, yeah, it's something I've got my eye on. Once again, a two out of three. All right, so now let's talk resolution. So without a doubt, the leader of the pack here are the A1 Graphic Poi. Um, they have a resolution of 5.3 pixels per centimeter, and in case you're curious, that even applies to the smaller version of this product, the uh, 80 pixel version that would be closer in size to the other Poi that I'm uh, using here. And the Pixel 80 HDs from Ignis come in second at uh, 4.7 pixels per centimeter. Next up, the Visual Poi version four from Pyroterra Light Toys comes in at 3.75 pixels per centimeter. And the 32 pixel programmable POI from NeoPoi come in last at 1.45 pixels per centimeter. Uh, I'm gonna include some footage too so you can see the results of uh, a given program that I downloaded into each set of POI so that you can kind of compare what the resolution looks like across all four sets.
All right, now let's talk battery life. Now I have a test that I usually use when I'm gonna test the battery life of LED POI. And that test is that basically I turn the POI on and have them flash white as bright as they can for as long as they can. It's the most punishing test that I can possibly give a battery. And it is also something that I've gotten a little bit of pushback on from some manufacturers, specifically because um, a lot of them think that it is not necessarily the most typical way in which the POI are going to be used. Especially when it comes to programmable POI, this is something that you're kind of unlikely to use in the wild, uh, simply because a lot of the logos and images that you're going to plug into them uh, are probably not just going to be pure blank white. What I instead did was I uploaded a rainbow fade pattern into all four sets of POI. Uh, basically the idea was I still lit up all of the LEDs along the length of them at the same time, but they strobed along between different colors and everything. And and I thought that maybe this might be a good way to uh, approximate the kind of performance that you're going to see out of them if you're filling them up with a variety of images and just setting them to go, say like during a gig or what have you. And I will say it gave me significantly different results for most of these POI than I got when I tested them just doing pure white mode on all of their individual reviews. So with that said, let's dig in. The Graphic POI 160s from A1 got an entire hour's worth of battery life out of that rainbow strobe, which is significantly longer than they got out of my test of them just going on full white mode. The Pixel 80 HDs from Ignis got only 20 minutes of battery life, which seemed kind of weird to me, and so I decided to run the test again this morning, and that's the exact same result I got the second time. So even with the rainbow strobe and everything, you only get about 20 minutes of battery life out of them. As for the Visual Poi Minis from Pyroterra Light Toys, they also got an hour's battery life out. And the 32 pixel programmable Poi from Neopoi got an hour and a half of battery life on this rainbow strobe, uh, which actually doesn't surprise me that much because they also got a pretty good battery life out of doing the full white test and everything. But it is good to see that that kind of performance uh, also uh, scales based upon how you change the images that you put into it. And it should be said, with absolutely all of these sets of POI, if you want to get better battery life, what you want to do, number one, is make sure that they are not going at full brightness. Number two, you also want to make sure that whatever images and logos that you program into them, it's got some black space around it, because the black space is points at which the uh, LEDs are not turned on. All right, finally, let's talk about price. The Graphic Razor POI 160s from A1 Technologies sell for $1,290 per pair. Uh, as a more direct point of comparison with the other POI in this review, they also sell their 80 pixel version for $832 per pair as of the recording of this video. The Pixel 80 HD from Ignis sells for $690 per pair. Visual POI Minis version 4 from Pyroterra Light Toys also sell for $690 per pair. And the 32 pixel programmable POI from NeoPoi well, they come in a variety of different options with different prices set to them, uh, but I'm going to give you the price of the POI that I'm using in this review simply because that's the feature set that we're working with here. Uh, those go for $345 per pair. This includes the wireless sync feature. Cool, so this was really fun. Uh, I've been wanting to do this for quite some time now, and especially because I get so many questions from people online asking about the different types of programmable POI and what their strengths and weaknesses are and everything, I felt like this was gonna be a good resource to put out there for people. And I know that there are other companies out there that also make programmable POI. If you have a company that created a set of POI that I didn't review here, I'd love to hear more about them if you would write that down in the comments for me. And of course, if you own one of these sets of POI, I would love to hear your opinions on them. Please leave me a comment down below. Uh, tell me what your experience with them has been. Tell me, did I miss an important feature that one of them has that is like totally worth it? Yeah, I'd love to know. If you're curious how I kept all of this information straight, it's because I had a cheat sheet. Check this out. So I went ahead and put together a one pager that includes all of the relevant information from this review. And you too can download a copy of this for yourself in PDF format by going to drexfactor.com. Uh, I'm gonna include a link down below to where you can do just that. 
If you dug this video and you'd like to see more like it in the future, pretty please hit that subscribe button as well as dinging the notification bell. This guarantees that you see all of my videos right when they drop. Finally, a huge thank you to my wonderful supporters on Patreon. They are the reason that this video and all the videos on my channel exist. If you'd like to sign up to support the work that I do, please head on over to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi and sign up. You'll get early access to all of my content as well as a say in what topics I tackle in the future. Plus, a lot of great exclusive content too. So please check that out. Thank you so much, and I'll see you all soon. Peace.